politics for me because I, I'm not in it for pol. I hate politics. Right. And yet I'm known as a political guy. I hate it. I hate all of the people generally speaking in politics. There's a handful of people that I respect. I'm only interested in politics, or not even, I'm only involved in politics to some degree because we have to be, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, but I do believe what I believe. I do have, I guess, a set of political beliefs, but they're more based in the, the Constitution and Declaration of Independence than, than anything a political mm -hmm. party says. So my values and my principles are what drive me. The people in Silicon Valley, what are the values and principles? Because right now what's being taught in school, what's coming out, Jefferson's not popular. Right. Marx is right. popular. Right. Well, I would, say, uh, I would say they are generally politically quite naive. Um, um, uh, and uh, they don't think about politics very much in one way or the other, uh, not as much as you do, or even as much, I'm probably unusual in that I probably think about it more than, than most people do. They're generally, they generally don't like it too much. Um, there is, there is a def the, their instincts are libertarian, but the politics end up being liberal because that's what's cool. And so, um, and so when, you know, uh, for us, politics is about ideas, it's about changing things. Um, but there's also this other mode where politics is about fashion. It's about, uh, and, that's, um, and that, that's always the risk you have in Silicon Valley. Or, you know, that's, that's, so, that's why Hollywood's so liberal. So it's not that the people, it's not that the people have thought things through in Hollywood. It's cool. And really, it's just cool. So how does Karl Marx become cool and Jefferson become uncool? How, how did that happen? You know, I, I'm more, into, I, I don't, quite know. I'm more interested in the future-oriented question, which is, how do we make Karl Marx okay, so uncool, how do we do that? and how do we make Jefferson cool? How do we do that? Don't quite know about that either, but that's, that's, <laughs> the, that's the question we should be asking. That's right. the question you want to, that's the question you want to fundamentally solve. I have, I And have. so, you know, why, why is wearing a Che Guevara t-shirt, why is that cool in a way in which wearing the a only, Jefferson... The only answer I can think of is because of a counterculture, that whatever the establishment says is uh, is cool is not and so the establishment has been Che is a rebel and uh, you know mm -hmm. is trouble um, Jefferson we got monuments to him and that's that's what the establishment my hope has come and this is really a dark hope but uh, my hope has been at some point that table is gonna flip and the establishment is going to be saying Che and socialism and communism is all neat. And at some point, Jefferson, don't read that. As soon as they say, don't read those things, you're cool again. Yeah, well, there's, there's, definitely, there's definitely some sense in which um, I can't, uh, I, there, are not, there are no perspectives on left of center in the US, anywhere left of center, mildly far left of center, that I think are anything but conventional at this point. So that, it, I definitely agree that it feels that way. You know, I think uh, to take sort of a non-political cut at this, I think one of the, um, you know, the countercultural in the 60s was the hippies. You know, we landed on the moon in July of 1969. Woodstock started three weeks later, and with the benefit of hindsight, that's when progress ended and the hippies took over the country. Today, the counterculture is to believe in science and technology. Um, you know, our, our society, the, the dominant culture, doesn't like science, it doesn't like technology. You just look at the science fiction movies that come out of Hollywood. Terminator, Matrix, Avatar, Elysium. I watched the Gravity movie uh, the other day. Um, it's like, uh, you, you would never want to go into outer space. You would just want to be back on some muddy island. Um, and so I think we're in a world where actually uh, believing that a better future is possible, that uh, you can uh, have agency and work towards a better future. Could I, that is actually radically countercultural. So could I, could I offer this um, to that? That it's not that we're we're anti science. I think I think you make a good point in the movies, but I don't think we're necessarily anti science or anti technology, as much as we are becoming more and more fatigued on virtual everything. Mm -hmm. We want something 
real. Mm -hmm. We're, nothing in our society is real. Our money isn't real. Our word doesn't matter right. anymore. Our, our, our communication isn't real. Nothing is real. Well, I think there's, you know, I, I've often said there's been this technological slowdown for um, the last 40 years, and, and there is probably some strange Explain connection. Explain that, because I um, don't think that makes sense. Where we've had progress in the world of bits, but not in the world of atoms. And this world of bits, we've had progress in computers, internet, mobile internet. Technology just means information technology. It's all about bits. But the world of atoms, um, space travel, uh, energy like nuclear power, uh, biotech, new medical devices, that's been much slower and there's been much less progress in those areas in the last 40 years. And it's been because of regulation. Because I, one's been regulated, the other's not. But we've had this sort of dualistic world where uh, the, wor the virtual world of bits has been growing very fast, but the real world of atoms has been kind of stagnant. And I think, uh, I think there's a strange counterpoint where um, the same thing happened with our currency, where um, the, um, the, the, the real value of money uh, became separate from the virtual uh, in August mm -hmm. of 71 when we went off the gold standard. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so, you, when you, when, you know, whatever you think of a gold standard, it, uh, it had the virtue of connecting the real with the, 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 the virtual. They were right. somehow connected. And it's when you separate the two that you have problems. So I think there's nothing wrong with, uh, with cyberspace or computers or anything, but it's when it becomes separated from the real that it's bad. And these successful companies have actually been the ones that somehow connected it. Facebook uh, succeeded because it was about real people having a presence on the internet. There were all these other social networking sites people had, but they were all about fictional people. One of my friends started a, a company in 1997, seven years before Facebook, called SocialNet. Um, and they, were, uh, they had all these ideas, and you'd be like a cat and I'd be a dog on the internet and we'd have these virtual reality and we would just not be ourselves. And that's, that didn't work because reality always works better than any uh, fake uh, version of it.